I was telling these guys on the way out here, I, this is only the third one I've ever looked at in person that I could possibly buy. One of my we had agreed well, on. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that, here's where I go with this. I'm glad Welcome you Welcome to the new Porsche yeah, restoration I'm glad that, shop. I'm, I'm glad that kidding. well we've done business a long oh, yeah, time, so yeah, I don't think you're gonna no, be that guy. No, no. Morning, team. Morning. Morning, sir. Last couple of days of the ice and snow was interesting. Yeah. Yes. All right. We're going to go rescue a super rare Porsche today. Which I've only had the opportunity to look at two. Both times I tried to buy them, it didn't work out. So hopefully it works out today. Is it a 72? Nope. Dang. We still need a 72, still though. We need a 72. So, rain, sleet, or snow, it's coffee walks, or grab your cup of joe and let's go. Made it. It was a little crunchy. Rain, sleet, or snow, and this is ice. Morning, Ron. How are you, sir? Every time I see you, I just remember you 20 years ago, man, when I came in your office to buy the first Jeep, and you set me down in your office and talked to me for an hour. He treated me like I bought a million dollars worth of cars just by one by one little simple Jeep from him. Well, and then it turned in. We did some Mustang Absolutely. deals after that, right? Absolutely. That's awfully nice to sit outside. At the end of the day, it's just water, I guess, but that is a factory four-speed tinker car. I know. Right. Uh, well, I haven't called it today yet, so <laughs> this might be it. Come on in, man. Come on in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got you, buddy. Uh, this was a weird fluke. I got a picture of a car, of a different car. So when you walk up to the car, it's a little confusing because it looks like a B in the front. It's a convertible D. Let me pull my flashlight out. Wow, you actually have. One. No, I don't. <laughs> you do that same old thing. You read it out. Eighty-six two ten. All right, now let's see if the tags are up there on the other side of the tank. Sean's flashlight. There should be a data tag up there and the Made in Germany tag. There it is. Okay. Right, no, it's right there by your hand. Well, this one's part and of it. And it hasn't been cleaned, which is nice. So nobody's even looked at that. Nope. What's the number? Can't see. I'm going to borrow your phone. Eight six five. I think it's a five one zero. Eight six two one zero. Two. Yeah. Awesome. So that tag, a lot of times people don't know it's there. It's such an odd location. It is odd. But Alex and Sean just cleaned it, so nobody's even inspected that. It's good so far. So that's one two. Now, mm -hmm. this car is a draw. Some people call it drows, dross, body car. So it should have another number inside the door. And it's missing. So Alex or and Sean, you know this as well. When we've loaded these cars. You know how they have the finisher plates inside. Yeah. All right, the finisher plates not here, which is not the end of the world. But hopefully it's uh sitting around somewhere. Nevertheless, if you got that data tag and the front floor tag, you know yeah. the car's the body's good. Is the engine in there? Fix and check that out. But we're looking at when. I would say that most people would think we're looking at a speedster, but we're not. We're looking at a convertible D. And the way you know that right off the bat, Alex, is just look at this. It's got roll-up windows. Yep. So speedsters did not have that. We can look at this there was window. no window at all, right? Like yeah, that? like that, right there. Yeah, no it's window. Got a different windshield frame. Yeah, the windshield frame's different. This one's taller. Yeah. Uh, the top bows are different. And on the speedster, like right there, you have a lift-off 
yeah. roaster style window like on an Austin Healy, but it's got roll up windows. It's got the right top frame. So this motor should start with a, if you can get over there, Alex, see it, you know where it is on the generator stand. It should start with a seven, and since this is an eight six series, it should start with like a seven six. See it, Sean? That was on that side. Well, seven three, rather. Seven three, six three, seven. That's what it looks like. Close? I'd say that's right. But Ron does have some paperwork which we're going to look at. I just want to kind of want to see the car first. It looks like a white on black car. A white dash. So there are a couple of rare options on these, Alex. Yeah. Uh, the D you could actually get, other than the roll up windows and the top, because this is actually a real convertible top. Actually folds back. It's not, not a roaster top like the bows come off. Radio. Oh. That's crazy rare because it's under dash only. Oh, yeah. The other option you could get was a clock, which this one doesn't have. I'm seeing red. Are you seeing red somewhere? There's white overspray. There's red. No, that is red. So, it's maroon. so the four main colors on these cars were ivory white, which is what this is, ruby red, which is what that is. <laughs> uh, there was blue. I think it was a mulsanne blue and a silver. So this car maybe is color changed. Spot over there, Sean. I don't see red anywhere else. No, it's deep. The dash is white. It looks really solid. Did a good job of covering it up. It's got a California license plate on the back from '94. All right, Ron. Let's see what kind of paperwork you have. Yeah, absolutely. So it's got a California tag on the back. Yes. So it also has the California original pink slip title from 1980, and I got a copy of the title before that from 76, I believe, and I even have a ticket in California that the car got back in the day, a copy of the ticket. So, so back to 76 has been California. Oh, you got a COA, mm -hmm, look at that. Mm -hmm. Guess we so, should look at that first. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure it's a real Porsche. Yeah. Here's, here's some original old pictures. No clue what that was for. Obviously, it wasn't on the car when I got it. It was for towing. Okay. Cow pusher. Yep. <laughs> but here they are. Feel free to look through here. Um, well, this license plate's still on it. Is it? Same plate? Yep. So what I'm looking... Do you, Are there any parts that came with the car? Just in that box. Okay. Just in that uh, box. There's a finisher plate that goes in here. Okay. And that's what's got the, the dross tag. I don't... Yeah. If you go through the car... Or look in the box. I don't even know if we even opened the trunk on it. I don't recall. Yeah, nobody, um, even, nobody even checked the uh, the number on the car as the, far as the data tag. The um, okay. So this is the 1980 mm -hmm, Porsche pink slip, which is nice. Yep. And then I've got. Have you been underneath the car? I've looked underneath the car. It looks. It it's extremely solid. It does look solid. Um, I did find the original Porsche emblem that was on the back of the car that okay. was in there i looked because kind of picked it up here's a copy of the title from 1976 Very and then here cool. is an old here's an old uh ticket that the car got in california so it was in california mm -hmm. but their their mailing address was wyoming but that's neat yeah they wouldn't so it stayed it all the way back to 76 a parking ticket what year is a that a couple of tickets it got a couple fines no license No front play, license plate. No so California was even picky back then. Oh, sure. They're a train wreck now. And this is where I think he sold it. As far the as car. getting tickets. Here's where I think he sold it back in the day. So $5,500 $5, in 1976. This car was never cheap. Or may, yeah, maybe 1980. I don't know if it's 76 or 80 on that one for when he sold it. But yeah, absolutely. Are there any service records in there at all? Uh, yes. Right here, there is, again, I did not go through these one by one, but you can see some old registration paperwork in here. 1980. Here is transfer of a vessel, 1980. That is really cool. I thought it was just cool to have the original uh, envelope with the title for when the title was mailed. Usually that gets tossed. This is an incredibly rare piece of paper for California. Is it? So that's your transfer sheet that goes along with a pink slip. Oh, okay, okay. And if you see the date code down there, it's 1979. Yep. So that was, yeah, probably when he, when he bought it. Wow. 
and um, and I think the guy had a couple ads. Here's an original ad on the car. I think obviously it came out of a magazine. That's really cool. Um, I don't know how many ads they did. And he told me that the original color on the car was a red color that was similar to this or this. I don't know. He just Held had it. the picture. <laughs> got, got it. Sean, Sean got yeah, Found it. Ruby red. So, yeah, there you go. That's exactly. That's so, exactly that'll show in the COA. I'm interested. I want to see a couple yeah, more of these documents. Absolutely. Feel free. So, it looks like it's had some front end repairs. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The guy said that it had a um the nose was changed out uh he was told that before he got it in 1980 i think he got hit in the front and maybe that has to do with that i don't know maybe the guy put the bumper thing on the car here just to prevent the same thing from happening again but um but yeah he uh that was changed out um so what obviously happened, the what, car was painted what happened was is that was a one year only car yep and so if you hit one in the front which is commonly they got hit in the front i think your only option back then was to put a b nose well, yeah. in my understanding, and I'm not an expert on this car at all. I do, as you can see, I, I enjoy Porsche, Porsches. I love the history of Porsches. But I did research. I'm sure I'm not going to tell you anything you already don't know. But I, layman's term, this guy outside of Porsche built this car. They sent him motors. They sent him whatever. He put it together one year, and then they put it out there and there are some people in the Porsche world saying that it's the most rare Porsche 356 because it was the one year but obviously the Speedster gets all the credit so well in my opinion and not everybody's opinion in the Porsche world it is actually it is actually a, an upgraded Speedster okay I mean almost all the mechanicals and the brake suspension are the same it's, it's got a taller windshield frame mm -hmm. it's got a an actual real convertible top it's got roll-up windows Speedster sales were starting to fall and fail okay. because of they weren't weatherproof or weather tight at all. Most of the sales were concentrated in California because their weather's weather, so nice. Right. So areas up in the Northeast, it rarely would a guy buy a Speedster because all that weather equipment would do is just not even keep the rain out. Right. Hence why they, a lot of people call it the bathtub. Okay. One is because it looks like a bathtub. Number two is it turns into a bathtub. Two. <laughs> just washing it's probably a pain. But the yeah. cool, but the really cool thing on a D though is, Alex, uh, see how the windshield pillars are completely different than the Speedster. Yeah. But on a D, you can take two nuts off, and the entire windshield lifts out. Wow. Mm -hmm. Really? Yep. So I mean, you you could drive it just like that. So or, what's what's the difference in 1959 of a D versus a Roadster? Or is it the same? Because I, and again, I'm, I was doing some research, but it looked to me like in 1959, three models were made. There was the D and then two models by Porsche. Is that accurate or was there No, they, they were, there was, it was just the D. Okay. And, but you had engine variations. You had the 1600, 1600S, and you had two of the Carrera motors. Okay. Uh, but there were a couple of Speedsters actually built in 59. Okay. But they were GTs. Okay, that's what it was. Alloy okay. body, okay. crazy rare. Um, okay. That was supposed to be a one year only car. There were some built in 58. Okay. However, they were all titled in 59. There's 1,331 of them. Is that an S motor or just No, a that's 16, a normal. Normal? 1,600 okay. normal as far I as wasn't sure of the difference. Well, it would say S on the deck lid. So, okay. But, anyways, no, it is, the, the motor is different. The S motor is okay. different. You can tell by looking at it. Okay. Here's something crazy interesting. Did you read, did you read this? I didn't, actually. Okay. And if I did, well, I read it, but I don't know who this person is. If you do, that's somebody I don't. So I'm not familiar ar with. arguably right now in the Porsche world, as far as these cars goes, the outlaw cars mm -hmm. is Rod Emery. Wow, that's there you go, Emery. That's his dad and his brother. Wow. So so I would say contact? that's that is probably who put the front end on this car. That's that would be crazy because they did all the sheet metal work back in the day, and Rod is still best known for sheet metal on three five six his speedsters. So he could have been the one to put the and obviously as you can see they did work. That's amazing. Just having the name Emery tied into that car is super cool. All right, we probably should have started here. Let's see if Sean's right. So this is actually a real COA. Have you tried to get a COA in the last couple of years? I did. Actually, I got one on that car. So with and, Or wait, no, it was this car. And the weird, one of them, anyways, and when I did they no longer had some of the information on the COA that I expected to, to, to get. To me, they don't give you the important information anymore. Okay. So they don't yeah. give you the engine number and they don't give you the transmission number anymore. Okay. Yeah. So the only way to get that is you've got to take the car to a classic certified 
Classic K, however you want to pronounce it, certified center, and they have to look at the car. Then they submit the number, then they'll give you the COA. Interesting. Yeah, so as you can see, it's a 1600, not an S. Okay. Yeah. Uh, pretty late car, 4.3 of 59, because <laughs> they started building these in August. Uh, I believe that motor back there is a 73637. Yeah. Okay, yep. it says it came with 73630. Well, my understanding is these cars, these motors were sent to this guy, and they just grabbed motors and stuck them in the car. This does not bother me at all. Okay. Uh, well, I, could I, that have messed with the motor number at all? You think? Absolutely. The, these if, cars, these cars, uh, the D's, like you yeah, said. I mean, back in the day, if I got a whole shelf of fifteen motors and I'm building a custom car, I'm going to tell one of my guys to go grab a motor and put it in there. I'm not going to. Well, these were built completely out of sequence. If, gotcha. The D is very unusual. There's, I mean, I got to give a lot of credit because a lot of the stuff that I've learned is from the D registry. And uh, oh, I didn't even know they had one. They have a registry just for these. Nice. And what's neat is this: this car is an unknown car. Okay. Which is exciting to me. The California paperwork is exciting. The Emory right. paperwork is exciting. The fact so this is not even in the registry. No. Okay. It's an unknown car. That's cool. uh, now what's interesting is the interior is brown leatherette. I believe that's pretty rare. And Sean, you're correct. It was ruby red. So the one tag we're missing would have told us this, that goes inside the door. Uh, if there was any tag on the car that I'd want missing, it'd be that one. Okay, well that's, and it may be Because <laughs> that one you car. can get. Well, it's like the Porsche emblem, you know, I'm like, well that sucks. I mean, you'd like to have all the original parts and I'm just digging through the car and I'm finding loose things in the car and I found that Porsche emblem. And there was a jack in there too. I'm like, it's like if somebody just threw stuff in the car that was loose, so. It may still be in there. And I'm not saying it is. Well, I was explaining to Alex on the way out here. It, but you'll dig through it. Whenever you run into a Speedster or a Convertible D or early 356, there's almost always something wrong with it. Yep. The car's got banged around. The <clears> motor's <throat> got swapped around. they got color changed and stuff like that. I mean, this car, if you want to go to the negative side, I was trying to grind you on the price. We're going to get there in a minute. It has had a nose, mm -hmm. which is is very common. Because right. even if you just slightly bumped one of these cars, you damaged it. Sure. Uh, and back the, then, the, go ahead. No, saying back then they weren't worth, they were worth money. But like you said, you couldn't get that nose. It, yeah, so it, it was not available. It, it was not available. It. It's available now. Gotcha. Um, the engine number is seven numbers off. That doesn't bother me at all. I'd say the chances of that not being the right motor are one percent. Yeah. Like they blew the motor up and found the car seven. There's just no <laughs> way. Right. Right. <laughs> and it's been. Color oh, we got two more in the back. Let's grab that. There you yeah, go. Yeah. And it's been color changed. But it, I, it obviously was color changed a long time ago too. Oh yeah, you had, weird. you got pictures all the way back to 1976. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. I'm sh I would imagine when they did the nose, the color changed it. We know. I don't know. Was white more popular in Porsches back in the day? Because that's a color change. That's a yeah. factory tangerine orange that was done back in the late 70s. Color changed the white. I think out of these cars and you know, like there were four major colors. If you had anything but ruby red, ivory white, mulsanne blue, or the silver, I can't recall the color. It's crazy rare, but white and ruby red are pretty common. Okay. I think yeah. the majority of the cars were going to be those four colors. Gotcha. Maybe. Now, the brown leather red, I think, is unusual. Ruby red with brown would just be stunning. Mm -hmm. But they sure did a lot of work to change that car either way. But I was telling these guys on the way out here, I, this is only the third one I've ever looked at in person that I could possibly buy. One of my we had agreed well, on. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that, here's where I go with this. I'm glad. Welcome you, to the new Porsche yeah, restoration I'm, 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 shop. I'm glad. That, well, we've done business a long yeah, time, so yeah, I don't think you're going to yeah, be that guy. No, no. I no mean, it, that's I mean, why I'm selling the car because I can't be the guy that treat make that car what it needs to be. Yeah. And it would cost me more money and more time to do that car than somebody that knows what they're doing, and that's the reason why I'm selling the car. Well, we've got a 356 right now that we spent in a ballistic amount of time. I don't know yeah. how many hours. We're close. Yeah. And you know more than I do, so look at the time you spent. I, for me, it would be nearly impossible. They take I, a lot of time. I can restore a Shelby quick, or I can restore some of these other cars that I'm more familiar with. I love Porsches, but I love them to get in and drive because it takes me away from the basic stuff that I build every day and look at every day. Right. So The last one of these I had the opportunity of buying. We had made a deal over the phone to get out there. We talked about the car for a long time, and I maybe talked too much. <laughs> And he decided he wanted more money. So that deal kind of blew up. Sure. And the other one that I looked at, I got there and it was just so rusty, I didn't want to tackle it. Yeah. So even though this car's got some issues, I'm just going to pay you what you want. All right, no worries. <laughs> deal? No worries. Yep, done. Love it. Yeah. As you can see, I've got this one, but that one's not as original. Well, it's going to be interesting. you got to pull that out in the ice for us to get this out. I know, yeah. I know. 
This has, <laughs> this has a this has a protective cover over the whole car. That's why these marks are on there. This cover has to come off, get get uh, heated up and pulled off. But uh, but yeah, that is very interesting that this car is going to have to go outside. She's All right, Alex, Sean, y'all figure that out. I'll get Ron paid. Well, it'll be easy Watch to get it out. Right there. Yeah. Let's yeah. get it yeah. back I'm in. I'm pretty sure that'll hurt. Yeah, it will. I've done it. Gloves on. Do what? Do you have a good glove jar on Like seriously. I do have Have gloves. you ever gotten something and then as soon as after you got it, things seem to go? Yeah. I should I'm still not ready. Like I'm not ready. Yeah. Cold, Zach. Pull it a little bit. There we go. Yeah, right, I enjoyed seeing all this stuff and buying the Porsche. Yeah. Your favorite place to eat in town. Which town? <laughs> Hope you're, you're not asking. Oh, that's on camera. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in this yeah. town? Honestly, the best place in this town to eat is probably the most rinky dink, backcountry place that's what you can we go like. to. House. Place Are you in? House. We're buying. Oh, I'm always in for that. Well, let's go eat. With that. Yeah. <laughs> let's go eat a house. So we're at Howell's Western Cafe. I, could, I didn't know if it was Howell's or Owl's or Howell's or whatever, it's yeah. Howell's Western Cafe. Let's go eat. Come on on now. That's fresh lemon at the, uh, <laughs> the Howell's Western Cafe. And ketchup's in the bottle. <laughs> I haven't seen this in a while. You gotta squeeze your, you gotta squeeze your lemon. Outstanding. All right. Blue cheese is in the bottle too. Ranch. This place is super efficient. Ranch. Lemon in the package, ketchup in the bottle, blue cheese in the bottle. And a side salad. <laughs> now that is a side salad right there. <laughs> Does it come with gravy? There's gravy underneath it, but I'm bringing a side of gravy. No, that's good enough. I didn't see it. I'm sorry. My eyes aren't very good. So crescent steak instead of chicken fried steak is what I believe to be a fried hamburger patty. That's good. Sean, will you hand me the ketchup in the bottle, please? I will. <laughs> I've never seen gravy on the bottom. The gravy's on the bottom before. It's like an upside down restaurant, I love it. Yeah. Looks good. Let's see if I can get to that. I got my eye on the breakfast burrito over there, too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. Look at that chicken breast thing hanging over the plate. So wow. then there's the Mac Daddy. Dang. Holy shit. Nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. What did you get, Sean? Over here. What is he the got, actual? He got oh a The actual chicken fried steak. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. 
that's what it's supposed to look like right there. I'm gonna have to some that. Chocolate yeah. meringue pie, chocolate peanut butter silk, lemon ice box, pecan, apple, or cherry. Normally we have coconut, but we don't have coconut today. Darn it, I was looking for the cookie. I know. I got one slice of that chocolate, though. Y'all want it? Oh, well, one of each. One of each? Yes, ma'am. Right. Awesome. This is the chocolate meringue. So ended up like I said, it didn't come off the plate. Do y'all want your other ones heated up? Your apple cherry pecan, do y'all want those heated up? Absolutely. Can we have them all about, too? Huh? Can we have them with ice cream on top? Let me see if I've got ice cream. If I have it, then yes, of course. Okay. <laughs> But she didn't say no. She realized you're gonna skip out on the bill. I'm gonna try this. Let me know. <laughs> Keep ordering more and more. Take a bite, pass it around. Mm. Nobody has four. That is so good. Tastes like grandma's. Lemon meringue. Um, just pass the fork. Really Be a man. That is really good. Yeah. Reach. Little little silk. Do I need to switch forks now so I'm not double dipping? So Eat. far, these are all three great. Yes, ma'am. Unsweet tea would be great. Peanut butter is amazing. I'm going to the cherry. Is that another drink? Nope, I got to do that last. Okay, I'm allergic to pecans, so that's y'all's. Perfect. I'll try the apple. Sweet tea. No, I'm good. Thank you. Ooh, that's quite yeah. Oh, yeah, pecans. Did you show Dennis the video wow. of the airline stuff? This is real homemade cooking at house. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> pardon the pun. This is Good. the cherry on top. Dad joke of the day. <laughs> Great recommendation, Rob. When you're wrong 99% of the time, you're right 1%. <laughs> this is outstanding. I don't have a what kills me. Woo! House in Springtown, Texas. That's good. That is some true home cooking. Yes, it is. <laughs> that was outstanding. My grandma made it. Let's go back to Murphy. <laughs> and we're back from Springtown, Texas rescued an incredible 1959 356d such a special porsche very solid california history thanks sean p thanks alex Welcome, the ice and snow are gone it was kind of a hairy day had a great lunch stay tuned for a sneak peek of what's coming up please like tag share and follow see you next week